नमस्कार माई सेल्फ प्रतीक इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सेकेंड नॉर्मल फॉर्म लेट अस स्टार्ट दिस सेशन ए रिलेशन इज इन सेकेंड नॉर्मल फॉर्म इफ एंड ओनली इफ इट इज इन फर्स्ट नॉर्मल फॉर्म एंड एवरी नॉन की एट्रीब्यूट इज फुली फंक्शनल डिपेंडेंट ऑन द प्राइमरी की फ्रॉम दिस डेफिनेशन वी कैन क्लियरली सी दैट देर आर टू रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर ए रिलेशन to be in second normal form and these requirements are first it should be in first normal form and second every non key attribute should be fully functional dependent on the primary key so you can see that this definition involve the concept of fully functional dependent so let us first revise the concept of fully functional dependent that attribute y is fully functional dependent on attribute x if it is functional dependent on x and not functional dependent on any proper subset of x it mean that y should be functional dependent on x but it should not be functional dependent on any proper subset of x we are talking about a scenario where y is fully functional dependent on x so here x is a combination of x1 and x2 so y should be functional dependent on x but it should not functional dependent on any proper subset of x so here we have two subset of x one is x1 and another is x2 so y should not functional dependent on any proper subset but it should be functional dependent on combination that is x1 and x2 let us consider an example here we have a database about shipments having three attributes s number p number and quantity and you can see that here supply number is repeating part number is also repeating while quantity is also repeating the combination of s number and p number is the primary key and we know that every primary key functional determine other attribute so in this case quantity is functional dependent on combination of s number and p number now let us give a thought that whether quantity is fully functional dependent on this combination or not so we have seen that quantity is functional dependent on combination this is the first requirement of fully functional dependent that it should be functional dependent on the combination but it should not functional dependent on any subset in this case this combination has two subset one is s number and another is p number if you consider one s number let's suppose s1 now you can see that there are two possible quantities for given supply number s1 it mean that quantity is not functional dependent on s number and same way if you consider this p2 there are two different values of quantity for p2 similarly quantity is also not functional dependent on p number so we can see that quantity is functional dependent on combination but quantity is not functional dependent on any subset this satisfy the definition of fully functional dependent which state that y should be functional dependent on x but it should not functional dependent on any subset that is x1 and x2 here y is a quantity which is functional dependent on combination s number and p number but it is not functional dependent on any subset that is s number and p number here quantity is fully functional dependent on combination s number and p number so in case of fully functional dependent y should be functional dependent on x but it should not functional dependent on any proper subset of x so the important point to remember is that it should not functional dependent on any subset now let us come to our database here in previous session we have discussed that primary key in this data set is a combination of course code and roll number this data set is already in first normal form but we have discussed that there are some anomalies in this data set we have insert update delete anomalies in this data set in order to remove these anomalies we have to apply second normal form and in case of second normal form the definition is the relation should be in first normal form and every non key attribute should be fully functional dependent on the primary key we already know that this table is in first normal form because for every row column combination we have only single value so first condition is satisfied now let us check on second condition the second condition is that every non key attribute should be fully functional dependent on the primary key it means all non key attribute should be functional dependent on the combination but it should not 
functional dependent on any subset of that combination. So in order to apply this step of second normal form, we have to prepare functional dependence diagram. To apply second normal form, your first step will be to prepare functional dependence diagram for the data set. So let us prepare FD diagram for this table. The first step will be to identify the primary key and we know that the primary key is combination of course code and roll number. So let's draw this primary key. So here we have created a box and in this box I have put course code and roll number because this is the combination which is the primary key. Now let's start with each non-key attribute. So first non-key attribute is course name and teacher name. So you can see that we are getting one value of course name for every course code. When it is C1, it is VB. When it is C2, it is Oracle and developer. When it is C3, it is C++ and when it is C4, it is Java. So we are getting one value of course name for course code. And similarly, we are also getting one value of teacher name for a given course code. So it means that course name and teacher name are functional dependent on course code. Here we have drawn this that course name and teacher name are functional dependent on course code. Now let's discuss about these non-key attributes like name, system used and hourly rate. Every student has one name. We also discussed that every student is using a one fixed system. That is for every student you are getting a one value of system used. For example, whenever it is 100, it will be always P1. Whenever there is 101, it will be always P2. So one student is using a fixed system. So we are getting one value of system used for a given roll number. If student is using a one system, then we will also get only one value of hourly rate because for every system we are charging a fixed amount. So whenever we have roll number 100, the hourly rate will be rupees 20. You can see that whenever we have roll number 100, the hourly rate is 20. Whenever we have roll number 101, the hourly rate is 30. So for every student, we are getting a fixed hourly rate. So we can conclude that for every roll number, there is one value of name. For every roll number, there is a one value of system used. And for every roll number, there is a one value of hourly rate. So we can draw this in the form of FD diagram like this. That for every roll number, we are getting one value of name. So name is functionally dependent on roll number. For every roll number, we are getting one system used. So system used is also functionally dependent on roll number. And same is true for hourly rate, that hourly rate is also functionally dependent on roll number. Now let us discuss about total R. We have already discussed that this total R is dependent on combination of course code and roll number. Because for one course code, you can see that we are getting multiple values of total Rs. Even for a given roll number like 101, we are getting different values of total R. So total R is not dependent on one course or one roll number. Actually, it is dependent on combination of course code and roll number. So total R should be shown in this way that total R is dependent on combination of course code and roll number and it is not dependent on either roll number or course code. There is one more dependence in this data set and that is the dependence between system used and hourly rating because for every system we are charging a fixed rate. Whenever we have P1, it will be 20. You can see whenever we have P1, it will be 20. Whenever we have P2, it will be 30. So for every system, we are charging a fixed hourly rate. It means that hourly rate is also dependent on system used. So this is shown here that hourly rate is functionally dependent on system used. So this is the FD diagram for this data set. And in this case, you can clearly see that course name and teacher name are dependent on course code while name, system used and hourly rate are dependent on roll number. This total R is dependent on combination of course code and roll number and we have one more dependence between system used and hourly rate and hourly rate in this case is functionally dependent on system used. Now it is the time to apply second normal form over this data set. So as we have discussed a relation is in second normal form if and only if it should be in first normal form. So you can see that this table is in first normal form because for every row column combination we have a single value so it satisfy this definition of second normal form and a relation is in second normal form if and only if every non-key attribute should be fully functional dependent on primary key. So here we have how many non-key attributes can you tell me 
So you can see that we have total six non-key attribute. All these attributes which are not the part of primary key are considered as non-key attributes. So we have name, system used, hourly rate, course name, teacher name and total are as non-key attributes. Definition state that non-key attribute should be fully functional dependent on the primary key. It means it should be functionally dependent on the combination but it should not functionally dependent on any subset. So here we have a name which is a non-key attribute. So it is functionally dependent on primary key because every non-key attribute we know that is functionally dependent on the primary key. But you can see that name is also dependent on one subset of the primary key that is roll number. So here roll number is the subset of primary key and name is dependent on this subset of primary key. So name is not fully functional dependent because it is dependent on subset of the primary key. Same way if you consider system used this is not fully functional dependent on primary key because you can clearly see that it is dependent on one subset of the primary key. So this is not fully functional dependent because it is dependent on one subset that is roll number. Same is also true for hourly rate. Hourly rate is functionally dependent on one subset of primary key that is roll number. So this is also not fully functional dependent on primary key. What about course name? Course name is also dependent on one subset of primary key that is course code. So course name is also not fully functional dependent on the primary key. And same way teacher name is also not fully functional dependent because it is also dependent on one subset of the primary key that is course code. And what about the total R? You can see this total R is dependent on combination. But total R is not dependent on any subset because for given roll number you are getting multiple total R's. So total R is not functionally dependent on code roll number. And same way total R is also not functionally dependent on course code because for a given course code you are getting multiple values of total R. So total R satisfied the definition of fully functional dependent that it is functionally dependent on combination but it is not functionally dependent on any subset. But this is not true for name, system used and hourly rate because they are dependent on roll number. And this is also not true for course name and teacher name because they are also dependent on course code. So we can clearly see that this table is not in second normal form because non-key attribute are not fully functional dependent on the primary key because they are dependent on the subset of primary key and in this case we have subset like roll number and course name and you can clearly see that these, these non-key attributes are dependent on these subset. So in order to normalize this according to second normal form we have to apply rule of decomposition. And what is the rule of decomposition to convert this first normal form table to second normal form so that it should satisfy second normal form. So we will discuss that rule of decomposition in our next video session. In this video session we have concluded that the given database is not in second normal form because here donkey attributes like roll number, name, system used and hourly rate are dependent on one subset that is roll number that course name and teacher name are dependent on one subset of primary key that is course code while total R is fully functional dependent on the primary key. Due to functional dependence of those non-key attributes on subset of the primary key this database is not in second normal form. Due to this we have anomalies of insert, update and delete in this database. So in order to remove these anomalies in the database we have to convert this table into second normal form. And in order to convert this table into second normal form, we have to apply rule of decomposition. So what is the rule of decomposition? In order to understand that, please watch next video session. Thanks for watching this session.